Hello everyone. Uh, today we are going to talk about uh, steps of investigation of an outbreak. We are going to cover the initial uh, the steps of initial outbreak, and uh, we are going to talk about also the uh, uh, steps of follow up outbreak. Uh, as you can see here, uh, there are uh, eleven elements in the steps of initial investigation. We are going to talk about uh, each uh, one of these elements, and we are go also cover. We are going to cover the steps of follow up uh, investigation. Uh, they are around four of them. Uh, the steps of initial investigation, uh, first point is the recognize potential outbreak. Second is the confirm presence of uh, outbreak. Uh, three, uh, alert key individuals. Perform literature review. Establish a preliminary case definitions. Six, develop a method for case findings. 7. Perform descriptive epidemiology 8. Implement initial control measures 9. Identify potentially implicated health practices 10. Consider environmental sampling 11. Communicating information about an outbreak Steps of follow-up investigations First point is refine the case definition Second, continue case finding Third, review regularly control measures. Four, consider if analytical study should be performed. We are going to talk about each point of these elements or steps. This is uh, the first uh, step of the uh, initial uh, outbreak. Uh, is the recognized potential outbreak. Uh, the outbreak may be identified by three points, the laboratory report or by the surveillance system or frontline healthcare workers, nurse and physician working in the affected unit. The second step of the initial outbreak is uh, confirm the presence of the uh, hospital acquired infection outbreak. How to confirm the presence of outbreak? Compare the uh, observe the current number of uh, cases with the expected previous number of cases, same location and period. Uh, also detect the occurrence uh, of more cases uh, of disease than expected. Sources, expected rates, uh, la laboratory report for some pathogens like Klebsiella pneumonia and Pseudomonas, uh, local hospital discharge records or local uh, mortality statistic for uh, hospitalized infection, uh, surveillance reports for notifi notifiable uh, disease uh, from Ministry of Health. Uh, if local uh, data are unavailable, you may uh, conduct a telephone uh, survey or uh, of phys a physician to determine whether they have seen more cases of uh, disease uh, than uh, usual. Pseudo outbreak uh, apply to a situation uh, with a rise in positive uh, lab findings. For example, positive microbiology cultures without a similar increase in the number of related clinical cases, uh, which is caused by a change in the surveillance system, lab methods resulting in the misclassification of non-infected cases as infection or identification of cases that were always present but pre uh, previously missed by surveillance. Uh, always note if uh, after investigations an outbreak is not confirmed, the infection prevention and control team must inform the clinical team who have reported the outbreak and provide reassurance. Uh, in this slide, we are uh, going to cover the causes of rising uh, positive uh, laboratory findings. Uh, here are the uh, laboratory factors. Uh, introduction of uh, a new test, uh, which was previously unavailable locally. Uh, 
uh, improving uh, laboratory techniques for identifications, introduction of new laboratory tests with poor specificity or sensitivity, contaminations during uh, laboratory processing, for example, contamination of media or cross contaminations of specimen during processing. Uh, here is the uh, non-laboratory factor, uh, the causes of rising positive uh, laboratory findings for non-factors, uh, the incorrect diagnosis of the uh, clinical entity, uh, contamination during uh, collections if the uh, correct procedures for the collection of specimens uh, is not uh, followed, also use of water of uh, poor microbiological quality in the washer disinfectors. Example, misdiagnosis of uh, tuberculosis has been reported due to contaminations of the endoscope with environmental mycobacteria from the rinse water. Uh, this is the third uh, steps of the initial outbreak, is the alert key individuals. Uh, what is important? It's important to make uh, sure the supervisors and the hospital leaderships are aware of the presence of an outbreak situations. So in this, uh, the resources can be made available and communications with staff and the community can be managed. Also, uh, in the uh, microbiology laboratory and staff working in the area where the outbreak is occurring should be alerted to look out for new cases and to look to collect and save the appropriate samples for investigations. Alerting key individuals in the hospital are essential to halting hospital outbreaks, especially for those of large scale serious outbreaks and those that need unusually high resources. Uh, four uh, steps of the initial outbreak is the perform a literature review. Uh, as you can see here, uh, there are uh, around eight uh, uh, links uh, you might go and uh, review. Uh, will help you to uh, learn more about the steps of uh, investigation of an outbreak. Step number five is the establish a, a preliminary case definitions. Uh, as you can see here is the uh, element and descriptive features and examples. Uh, we'll talk about the laboratory symptoms, person, place, and time, where you can uh, look at them and after you can uh, improve or develop uh, a case definitions for the uh, current situation. In, an, in the outbreak. Step number six is uh, develop a method for case findings. The investigator, the investigator conducts a planned search for cases using case definitions to identify new or additional cases of an infections or disease. Looking both backward and forward in time may be necessary to identify new cases as well as additional cases from the past using the time frame in the case definitions. Signs and symptoms of the infection or positive laboratory results from the case definition may be used to trigger a further investigations to see if a patient matches the case definitions. Simple data collections form, line, uh, which is the line list, is usually developed to collect information on possible cases. Also, the line list may include a few variables or be comprehensive. The benefits should be weighed against the efforts required to collect the data. The line list data will be used later in plotting the epidemic curve. In addition to the same point uh, or steps, uh, the data variables uh, to be collected, uh, there are some data need to be collected, which is the identifying information 
such as the ID, name, and telephone number, item uh, from the case definitions, demographic information, age, sex, date, the reason for admission, diagnosis, date of surgery or procedure, antibiotics, etc. Uh, location information, uh, when admission, when discharge and transfer, clinical data, onset of signs and symptoms, frequently, uh, frequency and uh, duration, uh, treatments, medical devices, what are the outcomes, information, hospitalizations, ICU care, ventilator and death, risk factor information uh, differ from disease to disease as well. These are the uh, data variables to be collected for developing a method for uh, uh, case findings. Step number seven is uh, perform descriptive epidemiology. What are the advantages of the epidemic curve? can identify the exact period of the outbreak, also can identify the probable period of exposure, can determine the epidemic pattern, common source, uh, propagated, or both. When combined with other information gathered during the investigation, it can help identify the possible exposure. Step uh, number seven uh, is the implement initial control measures. Uh, there are around uh, seven or eight points we need to mention here. Take action and implement infection control measures without delay. That means is you have to take the action immediately. Full implementations of infection control measures as recommended by the infection prevention and control special cleaning and disinfection procedure depending on the type of pathogens incubation period and susceptibility consider the isolation of patients staff and visitors and initiate contact tracing as appropriate determine patients staff at risk becoming ill or uh, and offer the uh, appropriate treatment for example, antimicrobial agents, active or passive immunization. It's always appropriate to educate or reinforce uh, healthcare workers about infection prevention and control precautions uh, to develop a plan to ensure ongoing compliance with them. Closure of catering facilities, if considered appropriate. Closure of healthcare facilities if necessary as well. Step nine, uh, identify potentially implicated health practices, creating hypothesis. Outbreak can be stopped by identifying and interpreting the chain of transmissions, information from the literature review on the type of pathogens and infections, and review of the cases in the line list may help identify which healthcare practices to focus on. Discussing the outbreak and possible causes with staff is also essential. Investigations are more productive if investigators are seen as partnering with the staff rather than attempting to find someone to blame. Observations should at first be done without a detailed data collection form and should focus on workflow and practices that are different from best practices, recommended infection prevention control guidelines and hospital policies. Also, uh, general infection prevention control practices such as hand hygiene and the standard precautions should be observed. Uh, it can be helpful to ask about shortcuts and methods that have been created by the staff uh, to work around perceived barriers to make workflow easier. Step number 10 of the uh, initial outbreak, 
consider environmental sampling. If environmental sampling is an option, cautious considerations should be given before deciding to open this course of action due to cost, lack of standard for interpretations, and the high possibility of inclusive results. Isolation of an organisms from the environment rarely explains an outbreak. Environmental sampling should be proceed only if strong epidemiological evidence indicates a possible source or reservoir of organisms exist. Environmental sampling may not be possible due to lack of lab capacity or supplies. On the other hand, if environmental sampling is indicated and possible, a positive result matching the pathogens causing the outbreak can be very satisfying. Step number 11. Uh, communicating information about outbreaks. Communicate early. If an outbreak is identified, it's important to communicate early and clearly. Also, notify the MOH as peer recommendations, meeting the MOH outbreak criteria of notifications, a new or emergent pathogen that is first identified in the healthcare facility, outbreak with the source is suspected or traced to an iatrogenic, outbreak that are de de deemed not manageable by the facility, keep the staff, patients, relatives, and visitors informed and assured, flag the electronic medical system in certain conditions such as MDRO to allow other staff to deal with the patient using appropriate infection control measure. Also, communication between healthcare facilities in case of transfer to enable the receiving institutions to put in place appropriate precautions. Communication between laboratory and clinicians to provide instant information about the organisms and resistance. Communication between pharmacy and clinicians to provide instant information about appropriate medication and to modify formulary if required. It's also essential that the spokesperson, not the staff members, would communicate directly with the media. As you can see in here, uh, this is uh, an explanation for uh, the outbreak uh, declaration uh, and uh, when uh, to declare that the outbreak is over. The hospital acquired infection outbreaks, Ebola outbreak, MERS cough, and cholera and meningitis as well. Uh, for the hospital acquired infection outbreak, there are no, when you have to declare that outbreak, when there is no new case epidemiologically linked to the relative outbreak are identified within 14 days from the last outbreak case the last auto, the last case included in the outbreak should be either negative discharged or deceased the, decla the declaration of outbreak and must be arranged with the GDIPC team also for any other diseases you can look at them in the outbreak management uh, manual now we are going to move to the uh, other part of this presentation is the steps of follow-up investigations and we are going to cover the four points which are the refine the case definitions continue case finding review regular control measures consider if analytic study should be performed uh, first step in the uh, follow up investigations is the refine the case definition. As the outbreak continues, the outbreak case definition may need to be refined. We can refine the case definitions with the new information available with time with additional diagnostic information. In the early stage of an outbreak investigations, with the aims is 
to detect as many cases as possible. It requires a more sens sensitive case definitions. For example, a person with three or more loose stools in 24 hours. As, an, as the outbreak evolves and more information becomes available, case definition can be refined to be more specific using additional laboratory or epidemiological restrictions. These restrictions help to avoid misclassifications, false positive, and are useful for hypothesis testing. Uh, the second point is the continual case finding and surveillance. Case finding and surveillance should be continued throughout the outbreak investigations. Methods of case findings and surveillance will vary for each outbreak but may consist of one or all of the following point prevalence screening, admission screening, discharge screening, retrospective laboratory surveillance, prospective laboratory surveillance, self report, and etc. Uh, the third step is review control measure regularly. All interventions implemented during the investigations should be reviewed for necessity and monitored for compliance. Additionally, any interventions that are difficult to maintain or are labor and resource intensive should be reviewed frequently to determine when those interventions can be discontinued. Examples of these interventions include cohort patient on a particular unit or dedicating staff to case patient care only. Another example using specialized or advanced PPE, personal protective equipment, as in case of the beginning of the MERS-CoV outbreak. These interventions cannot be sustained over a long period of time due to disruptions of facility workflow and throughput and due to cost in terms of time and resources. Step number four, consider if an analytic study should be performed. Analytic study typically should be used to test hypotheses, not generate them. However, in, cer in certain situations, collecting data quickly about patients and a comparison group can be a way to explore multiple hypotheses.